Kia Ora and hi from Auckland, New Zealand, where behind me, the FIFA Women's World Cup draw will take place tomorrow. The United States, along with 32 other teams, will find out where they will be playing next summer as this tournament takes place. I'm alongside Carly Lloyd, two-time World Cup winner for the United States, who will be one of the hosts for the event tomorrow and picking all the different balls where we'll find out who the U.S. will play. First of all, the United States come into this tournament, back-to-back -back champions. Can they do it again and how? You know, I think this is going to be the biggest and best World Cup, uh, Women's World Cup that we've seen as of yet. Um, so the competition is going to be really challenging. It's going to be really hard. I mean, to win a World Cup is hard. To win two in a row is even harder. To go for three is incredibly difficult. But uh, that's what you want to see on the women's side. Well, this is going to be the ninth edition of this tournament. The United States have won four of those. But every year we hear, okay, the competition is catching up. England are better, Spain are better, Germany are better. Is that the case? Do you think this is going to be the most wide-open tournament that we've seen yet? I do. Um, the world is catching up. I think that, that we've sort of had a head start. We've had the support, the investment. Now you're seeing the investment from all these other teams, and you're seeing the support. You see the, the Euros, how well they did, England, Spain, um, the likes of Germany, Brazil, France. I mean, y you want to see that. It's obviously pushing the U.S. to be better, um, but it's, it's going to be incredibly difficult. But, you know, if, if I was still a player, I'd be saying, all right, bring it on. You know, we're the number one team in the world still. Um, and we have to have that confidence going in there, knowing that, yes, the world is catching up, but we are the United States of America, and we want it to be this competitive. So take me back to that. You mentioned being a player. Do you remember the moments when the draw was happening as a player waiting for that World Cup, or were you a player that didn't pay attention to that and said bring it on? But just that mindset now of this team, they're coming in off of two straight losses in the recent window, thinking about what this tournament will look like next summer. Yeah, I mean, as a player, you know, you want to see who you're going to face. And uh, once you qualify for the World Cup, you know, there's some lag time in between. And then once the draw is set and you see who you're going to be facing, um, it, it starts to really set the stage and you get really excited for it. Uh, you know, I go back to my playing days. It, it was never really about the opponent. Of course, you've got the, the tactical plans and things that you've got to look out for for other opponents. But it always came back to... What are we going to do to be the best version of ourselves? And, you know, when you focus less on what the other team is, is bringing and focus more on, on what you want to bring as a, as a squad and as a team, um, that's where we've always found that we've been the best. So it's exciting. Um, it, is, it is a grind, as you know. I mean, it is, it is hard from game one to, to game seven. I mean, it's, you've got to just weather the, the journey, and uh, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs, but um, I'm really excited to be able to watch this time around. Uh, one of the other fascinating things I find with this tournament, it'll be the first time the Women's World Cup will have 32 teams in an expanded format. Two host nations, Australia and New Zealand, the first time in the Southern Hemisphere as well that the tournament will take place. I mean, what, what does that do for the growth of the women's game and the continued exposure for other nations to be a part of that and also inspiring potentially that next generation of female soccer players? Oh, it, it, it's incredible. I mean, you, you're just seeing the boom everywhere. And uh, the hopes is that, you know, in Australia and New Zealand in particular, that it doesn't just peak at the World Cup and then die off after, after it's done. You know, we want to continue to see that rise uh, all around the world. Um, and uh, it's incredible. You know, I, I, I watched as a little girl the 1999 w Women's World Cup at Giants Stadium. And I said to myself, I want to be them. And so it gives all young girls, uh, you know, those aspirations of, of wanting to do that. So the more that, you know, the, the support can be there and uh, all of these female amazing athletes can be role models. You know, that's really what it's all about, inspiring the next generation. Well, Carly will be one of the hosts for the event here in Auckland, New Zealand. This Saturday, you can catch our coverage live on FS1, 2 a.m. Eastern, Saturday morning. We know you'll wake up for us. Join us either from late Friday night or early Saturday with your coffee. And from then, we will find out who the United States, as well as the other 32 teams, will play in the upcoming FIFA Women's World Cup next summer, live from Australia and New Zealand on Fox Sports.